Hello, my name is Joe Dent. I'm the vicar of St Andrew's Church in Plymouth. Welcome to this first uh, Knowing God devotion is what I'm going to call it. Uh, the idea is that we're going to look at um, some great Bible passages from the book of Isaiah, passages that were written in times of great turmoil to turn people's hearts and minds back to God, to deepen their devotion to him, to strengthen their faith in him. And I hope that during this uh, lockdown time, that will help us to strengthen our devotion, uh, deepen our faith in the Lord as, as well. So the idea is that it, it's, it's almost going to be kind of like a shared quiet time. I'm going to uh, pick one passage for the week and we're going to uh, look at it uh, three times. Uh, first look on Sunday evening and then uh, on Tuesday morning and then on Thursday morning and take it a little bit further e each time. And as we do so, praying that the Lord would speak to us and turn our eyes to him. So I hope it'll be encouraging. I hope it'll be useful. And let's have a prayer to that end together now. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we ask that uh, as we meditate on your words now, that you would speak to us. Show us more of yourself. Feed us. Deepen our knowledge of you and our worship of you. So that in these difficult times, we might have the kind of stability, courage, perspective that flows from knowing you, knowing you, the true and living God. Amen. Amen. Okay, so our passage uh, uh, this week is Isaiah chapter 6, and uh, right now we're going to look at verses 1 to 5. So let me uh, read those. Uh, I'm reading from the ESV version of the Bible, the English Standard Version, but it um, be great if you've got a Bible open as well. Um, might be slightly different from the words I'm reading, but that's fine. Here we go. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And I thought it might be uh, helpful if you could kind of see my Bible. So I think I can do that here like that. And um, this is my quiet time Bible. So you can see I'm a little bit of a, a Bible scribbler. I find it helpful just to be able to highlight things or uh, just underline things, uh, write notes on it and so on. So don't get distracted uh, by those. Uh, and this passage is intended to impress upon us the sheer greatness of God and in times of turmoil knowing the greatness of God uh, really puts things in perspective puts the turmoil in perspective Isaiah had some kind of it's clear from this passage Isaiah was having some kind of vision of God and he tells us what he saw but before he tells us what he saw it's interesting that he tells us when he saw it so I'm looking at this bit just here it says in the year that King Uzziah died in the year that King Uzziah died now that was kind of a big deal um, Uzziah had been a, a good king for Israel in the sense that he'd reigned a long time it was a prosperous reign it was um, a time of plenty a time of security but now he's died and there's maybe a, a sense of foreboding um, people are wondering what's going to be next what's going to happen next times of uncertainty so when Isaiah says in the year that King Uzziah died I'm thinking it's kind of uh, like when we we're going to say when we look back on 2020 we look back on 2021 we're going to remember it and we're going to say do you remember in the year of the Covid pandemic or do you remember the year in America they stormed the capital do you remember those times of turmoil that's the sort of the sort of setting 
for Isaiah 6. So we can sort of see a connection with ourselves just there. But there's something else about uh, King Uzziah as well. Uzziah might have been good for Israel's prosperity, but he was terrible for Israel's spirituality. He was terrible for that. He was a man who had very little sense of the greatness and the majesty of, of God. We'll, we'll have a little look at this a bit more next time. But in total contempt for God, Uzziah entered the temple and went where he had no right to go as king. And he did what he had no right to do. And he thought it wouldn't matter, that he could do what he liked, that he could treat God however he liked. He, um, um, he thought it didn't matter how you treated God. He, he put it like this, he had a very small and peripheral view of God. And you can read about that in 2 Kings chapter 15, if you want to. Um, so in the year that King Uzziah died, uh, that is Uzziah with his, uh, it's confusing, is it? We've got Isaiah and Uzziah, they sound a bit the same. But in the year that King Uzziah died, Uzziah, who had this sort of small and peripheral view of God, in the year that he died, in those times of turmoil, Isaiah says, I saw the Lord. God said to him, it's time for a change. You really need to see me for who I really am. And, and what happened was that God, as we're looking here, God showed Isaiah his true greatness, that, that really he's not small and, and peripheral and irrelevant to life. He is unimaginably great. And the greatness of God comes out in um, uh, the seeing. I saw the Lord. It comes out in the beings that are here. It comes out in the singing. And the greatness comes out in the shaking. Okay, it comes out in the seeing. He says, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. So the greatness of God, this great throne, high and lifted up. In fact, it's so great that the, the train, the fringe, of God's robe, just the fringe filled the earthly temple. So he's staring up at this vast vision of, of God in all his greatness. That's what he sees. And around God, he sees these beings. There's the seeing, then there's the beings here, which he calls seraphim, which means uh, something like burning ones. So um, living flames of fire surrounding the throne of God. These, these great beings but great as they are, they're in the presence of, of God. And even these great beings adopt a kind of posture of humility. Do you see, it says they have six wings. And with the wings, they covered their faces. They covered their feet. Okay, and they're flying with the other two. But they adopt this posture of, uh, he's too great to look at. And um, do you remember a bit like when um, Moses took his sandals off uh, when he was before the burning bush? that time realized he was on holy ground it's the same sort of idea here the flames themselves as it were cover their their feet so whatever these beings are and great as they are they they see the greatness of the god in whose presence they are and they're they're singing there's the there's the seeing there's the beings and here's there's the singing or calling what they're saying and they're they're saying holy 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 is the lord of hosts what does what does that word holy mean? What, what's it, it getting at? Well, the clue to me seems to be in the second half of what he says just here. The whole earth is full of his glory. In other words, when you look at reality, the world around us, the earth, in all its uh, beauty, in all its splendor, in all its complexity, in all its majesty, um, we see all of that when we look around us we realize it's not just the world it's not just reality it's creation it has it all has a creator and his fingerprints are all over all of it and if the whole earth is full of his glory fingerprints are all over it if the whole earth is full of his glory then he must be a very very great one who made it indeed so god's holiness here is related to his uh, greatness in being able to create and make such an incredible world. And these mighty beings are taken up with all that as they sing about it. Um, there's the seeing, 
there's the beings, there's their singing, their calling. And the last thing that highlights the greatness of God is the shaking. As, as they speak, it says the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. So great is what's going on here. So it's a vision which really underlines the greatness of God, the awesomeness, just the sheer. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing vision. Now, one of the things that strikes me as I'm looking at this is, um, I don't know if you've got these in your Bible, these cross references here, but there's a cross reference here to John chapter 12 in, in the Gospels. And we're just going to flick over to, to that, John chapter 12. And if um, we can see that just here, just see that uh, here in John 12, this is the last week of Jesus's life. Um, John quotes from Isaiah chapter 6. It's the bit we haven't read yet. It's the bit we're looking at uh, a little bit later in the week. Um, he has blinded their eyes, or verse 39, therefore they couldn't believe. For again, Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 6, God has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. So he's quoting from Isaiah 6. And then John says, Isaiah said these things because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke of him, of Jesus. So when we're reading Isaiah chapter 6 and seeing this greatness of God, uh, John says what Isaiah was seeing was actually the glory and greatness of Jesus. He's not called Jesus in Isaiah 6, but this is... Um, this is a vision of Jesus the King uh, before he came to earth, before he was uh, made man. So as we read that, like, we're, we're finding it, we're to think of Jesus in, the, in, this kind of, in this kind of way. So back to Isaiah chapter 6, I'm reading this and I'm thinking, is my view of God, is my view of Jesus, is it such that I realise that he is worthy of this kind of rocket-fueled worship? that makes the walls of the temple tremble. That every sunset and every landscape proclaims his glory. He's the one who created it. Glory to God, glory to Jesus is what this passage is making me think. He's got, you know, he, he's not small, he's not peripheral. He dwarfs us, he dwarfs everything. So uh, huge is his greatness. We might be living through times of turmoil at the moment, confusing times. But God is greater and, and God is mightier than anything that we're going through, whatever that turmoil, whatever that trouble might be. So do you see, Isaiah seems to be being recentered here on God. His view of God is being expanded. And in the process, the times of turmoil he's, he's living through are being kind of put in perspective. We feel dwarfed by what's going on. And God is showing us that um, even um, times of turmoil like this can be put in perspective in relation to God and his greatness. So the passage begins with these words. Let's just finish off now. In the year that King Uzziah died, okay, the old king is dead. But look how the passage ends down here. Isaiah says, for my eyes have seen the king. He's kind of saying, you know, I, I thought that King Uzziah was the real king, but it turns out all along that he wasn't. I've just seen the real king, the one who sits on the throne, and he is unimaginably great. And in terms of times of turmoil, what a difference it makes to know that. So I think this image of God, of Jesus on the throne, is a really helpful image to carry into the week this week, to keep coming back to in our hearts and minds. Jesus reigns, things are not out of control. And this Jesus, this God is more than worthy of all our worship and trust. So shall we pray? And um, I've got a prayer just here. So if you want to pray along with me, you can uh, sort of see that. Uh, let me try and get rid of uh, me here we go so a moment's quiet and let's pray holy 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 are you O lord 
The whole earth is full of your glory. Heavenly Father, help us to remember that there is a throne, there is a centre to reality, there is a king, and the world is not out of control. Please forgive us for living as if you are peripheral to life. Please recenter us on yourself so that we're better able to love you and live for Jesus. And in his great and holy name we pray. Amen. Great. Well, thanks for uh, joining in with this. We'll see how it goes. I'm figuring out what the best way uh, to do this is. Um, I've left the comments section on. Uh, below the video so do chip in with your own uh, thoughts or things that have struck you and perhaps that's a way that we can share things with each other take care and i'll see you soon bye bye